Okay, so now we're in section 5.2, and so 5.2 is sum and difference formula, so we're going to talk about how we can add um, inside of a trig function or subtract inside of the trig function. So we've seen before on a worksheet a long time ago that sine of 30 degrees plus sine of 30 degrees is not the same as sine of 30 degrees plus 30 degrees. These are different. And so we're actually going to get a formula to help us figure out what it actually is when we have something like this. So for today's um, lesson, you'll be able to apply the sum and difference formulas for sine and cosine. You'll be able to apply the sum and difference formulas for tangent. And then you'll be able to use these formulas to verify identities. All right, so let's look at our sum and difference formulas. So when we have our sine function and we're adding angles inside of the sine function, you just take sine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle plus cosine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. And we're, we're, when we're subtracting, you just change the addition to subtraction over here. Cosine's a little different. When we're adding inside of cosine, we actually do all of the cosine first. So you take cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle minus sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. All right, and so when we're subtracting, you change this minus to addition. So when we're with cosine and we have a sum, we actually subtract. And when we have a difference, we add. I know, not convenient. Okay, and then with tangent, this one looks completely different for, from all of them, but it should make sense that it's a quotient. Okay, so um, when we're adding inside of tangent, you take tangent of the first angle plus tangent of the second angle divided by 1 minus tangent of the first angle times tangent of the second angle. And so when we subtract inside of the tangent, you just change this one to a minus sign. All right, so let's talk about how we're going to use these to answer questions. All right, so number one, A, we need to evaluate each of these, each of the following using the identities and the unit circle. So the first question says we need to find cosine of 15 degrees, but we notice 15 degrees is not on our unit circle. It should be right here. So how are we going to do that? Well, we could probably add or subtract some of the angles we know to get 15 degrees. So cosine of 15 degrees is the same as cosine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees because 45 minus 30 is 15. So these are equivalent. But now we have angles we know how to work with and we can use the difference formula for cosine. All right, so that tells us what we need to do is take cosine of our first angle, which is 45 degrees, times cosine of 30 degrees. All right, then we're going to add sine of 45 degrees times sine of 30 degrees. And we can use our unit circle, or we probably know at least some of these already. Cosine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. Cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2. Sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. Sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. All right, so we can multiply across. This is going to be square root of 6 over 4 plus root 2 over 4. Luckily, we have the same denominator. All right, so this is root 6 plus root 2 over 4. So this is cosine of 15 degrees. We can check our answer. All right, so co if we're in degree mode, yeah, cosine of 15 degrees is root 6 plus root 2 over 4. And so the work is actually showing all of this, right? We can easily put this in our calculator. All right, let's look at the next one. Sine of 5 pi over 12. Again, 5 pi over 12 is not something that's on our unit circle, but hopefully we can add or subtract some angles to get 5 pi over 12. And so looking at the denominator, so first let me actually make a little space because you're going to need some scratch work to figure this out. 
All right. How can we get a denominator of 12? Well, that's probably if we're adding and we have to get a common denominator. So what could give us a 12, maybe three and four in the denominator? So maybe something like pi over four plus pi over three. Maybe that'll give us what we want. Common denominator of 12. So this would be three pi plus four pi. What's that? Seven pi over 12. That's not what we wanted, so our guess wasn't right. So my recommendation is actually kind of work backwards. Start with five pi over 12 and see what you need to add or subtract to get what we want. All right, so what if I subtract pi over six from this? We're gonna have a common denominator of 12. This one stays five pi, this one is minus two. All right, so what do we have here? Um, 5 pi minus 2 pi is what? 3 pi over 12, which is pi over 4. Oh, that sounds good. This means that pi over 6 plus pi over 4 is 5 pi over 12. Oh, two. let me just wipe this out. So that's what we wanted. We can rewrite 5 pi over 12 as pi over 6 plus pi over 4. All right, so let's get back to the problem. Instead of doing five, uh, sine of 5 pi over 12, we are going to do sine of pi over 6 plus pi over 4. And that tells us, oh, we're going to have to use the sine sum formula because we are adding. All right, so let's go back up, see what our sum formula looks like. All right, so that means we have to take sine of our first angle, so sine of pi over 6 times cosine of our second, pi over 4 plus cosine of the first one times sine of the second one. Yeah. All right, and so we can use our unit circle to find sine and cosine of all of these angles, and you probably know most of these already. All right, so sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. Cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. And then sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So now we just got to multiply and then add. Oh, this is a 4. Ah. Root 2 over 4. And this is root 6 over 4. Oh, you guessed it. Same as before root 2 plus root 6 over 4. Now all of our answers won't be the same. These just happen to be like reference angles. 15 is the reference angle for, or actually no, they're, I'm not even going to say anything confusing. These are related. Okay. All right. Let's look at some more examples. All right, let's look at this one. All right, so this looks a little different, but it's actually a little easier than the others. So we got sine of 25 degrees times cosine of 35 degrees plus cosine of 25 degrees times sine of 35 degrees. We notice none of these angles are on our unit circle. However, this should look familiar. Sine of something, cosine of something. Cosine of the first thing, sine of the second thing. Does that look something like this? Let me see if I can put it both on the screen. All right, sine of the first angle, cosine of the second angle, plus cosine of the first angle, sine of the second angle. This is the sine formula or the identity for addition. So this is the same as sine of 25 degrees plus 35 degrees. 
Okay, so being able to recognize our sum formula is important. Okay, so that means we want sine of 60 degrees, which we know this is root 3 over 2. Okay, all right, let's do a few more examples in the next video.